Sorry, we missed you. Welcome to another episode here in the Off-Quick Garage. Today with a very special episode, we are going to, well, let's go. So I picked up both boxes now from the Korea here and they've got the same weight. So I can assume there are four batteries in each box. Okay, let's go home. Oh yeah, factory direct. Oh, that is new. This is one piece now. Look at ooh, that is new. They put a sticker on here. Shenzhen Basin Technology, made in China. Capacity, voltage, and internal resistance. And I wasn't quite sure if they really deliver eight batteries for the price of six, but they did. Well, she actually left a note inside the order saying I get eight delivered, but I'm paying only for six. So, and they really delivered eight. That is amazing customer service. All right, I just unpacked all the cells, inspected them, nothing is damaged, nothing is scratched, nothing is dented. So everything is good. I like, I really like this sticker here, what they put on. Here, yeah. anyway, we got all the bus bars here. We got all the six M6 screws here as well. This is all fine. And I also measured the voltage and it is exactly 3.2 8 volt so lost 10 millivolt during the transport so that means we are now battery complete we've got all we've got now all 16 battery cells here the eight new cells and the eight cells already been delivered and i recently bought this box here a very stable plastic box and this is where we are going to put in all these cells and connect them in series as the battery. I hope they all fit in there. Perfect! It fits! Look at this! That is amazing, right? I like this setup. So the plan is now to have all these batteries connected have all the balancing leads as well connected and then well another plastic divider on top of the batteries then so they are sitting in their own compartment in this box and on top of that the BMS will live and then we still have enough room here to put in connectors switches fuses this all will be going into this box here and then finally we can close this box and you can even lock it with a padlock so nobody can open it. And then the whole battery will be sitting in this isolated box and there will be only two cable coming out and everything else will live inside. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. Of course, this is now so heavy. This is like... Um, 40. Okay, this, this whole box is now around 80 kilos. So, of course, you cannot move it anymore. It's so heavy. The toolbox was $29 here in the local hardware store. Heavy duty, 100 liters. Well, now it carries 14 kilowatt hours. Who would have thought? Okay, and now here comes the big question. Do you need to compress these battery cells? Do you have to compress them? I've seen many videos where people do compress the battery cells. I have seen exactly the same amount of videos where people don't do it. I would say you don't do it if you are in a stationary box like this. If you use battery cells for a mobile solution on an e-bike or an electric vehicle, you should probably compress them. And let me show you what I mean. 
So the idea of compressing a battery bank is to keep the batteries together as close as possible. So you've got one rail over here, the other one on the other side, and then you connect them both with a long rod and compress the whole battery together as much as possible so it doesn't move, it will become one unit. And I've, I've got fully understanding why you should do this in a mobile solution. If you have an electric car, for example, and you use these batteries for your vehicle and they start rubbing after a while against each other, you eventually will wear off this blue heat shrink. And one of my viewers told me this case where the battery is actually put in, this aluminium case, is the negative terminal. So all this metal underneath the heat shrink is the negative terminal. And you can imagine if, you, if they start rubbing against each other and eventually it rubs through the heat shrink and you get negative to negative in a serious connection up here, you will get a short between two cells. And this is potentially something you don't want in an electric vehicle. Well, you don't want this situation at all, even, even not in a stationary setup. I've read these comments under my videos as well. Some people said you need to compress these battery cells because they will expand. I know they expand with heat. When you have a high discharge or a high charge, they will expand with temperature, of course. So when they expand, you will have a little bit of an arch. But I don't really know. These kind of cells, you know, how much would you expect they will expand? Will this be one millimeter or more? Five millimeters? I don't think five. No, I don't think five. Five would be like, this would be overcharged and then this is close to the, you know what I mean. So I think what we are talking about is maybe one or two millimeters on each side as a maximum. So if you, if you compress them with some metal brackets and threaded rods, what happens to this force of these batteries if they want to expand and they cannot? So one cell will push into the next one and this one will push in the other one. But still they are pushing hard against each other, right? Is that correct? And here's what I think I would like to do. Can you see that? This is not just a hole, it's a long slot. Okay, so I have now connected the positive with the positive and negative with the negative. And I left these loose. I didn't tie the, the M6 bolts at the moment here. I just want to show you something. So usually, usually the batteries are close together. You will push them together as close as possible to fit these bus bars. But you can also slightly push them apart. And they are still 100% fine connected with the bus bars. But look at this. There is now a, that's a three millimeter gap in between, three millimeter gap in between these battery cells. I can now tighten these screws here and the battery will stay in this shape. Ah, the frog. It's, it's raining today. And the frog, shh, shh. Now they will stop in a minute. So when you tighten these screws now, the battery obviously will stay in this shape with this gap in between. It will take up more space, of course, if you have a whole row of batteries and you're adding three or four millimeters between each battery cell. But now think what happens if these cells expand and you've got this gap in between. There is some space where they can actually expand and contract again without touching each other. So potentially they will not push into each other that hard as if you have no gap in between and you have them compressed. I understand if you have them really close together and not compressed and you put your bus bar on and then they expand, they will put some forces here on the bus bars on the terminals as well. And the bus bar is still connected between these battery cells. So this part doesn't move, but the battery actually wants to go this way apart from each other. So this will put some forces here on the bus bar, of course. So the same scenario here, we've got this gap in between and the batteries expand. Nothing will happen to the bus bar, right? Nothing will happen because there's space in between. So I think for a stationary solution, this is the better option.
The other thing I like here is we've got better cooling. If we compress these cells here, we've got no gap in between and there's of course no airflow. While here, three millimeter gap, air is circulating in between these battery cells. I, I looked through forums as well, I googled a lot and had a look on YouTube and everything and I couldn't find the right or wrong answer when you compress cells and when you leave them without compressing. Yeah, and then the second thought with this box here, if we have them all like three millimeter apart, well, as much as the bus bar allows, we've got some nice airflow in between the battery cells here as well. And I potentially can also mount some fans from the outside, which are, which are pushing cooler air into this box if they're getting too hot. So I can integrate a thermal battery management. This will be later down the track. I'm not sure how, how warm or something they will get. The last couple of weeks we had about 35, 40 degrees, 44 degrees one day. And I measured the temperature of the batteries here on the workbench and they did not exceed 35 degrees. But of course the, the charging current was only 5 amps or so for these batteries. So there was no load or something on there no high currents went through these batteries at these temperatures. So 35 degrees, this is well within specs. Uh, the rain kicked in last night and I couldn't, couldn't continue filming in here. It was just too loud with the metal roof. So anyway, guys, yeah, this is all now coming along quite well. We've got the batteries now here. We've got other stuff being delivered and we are still waiting for the capacity tester, which should not be far away. I have actually ordered a second one because it takes just too long. People want to know how good these batteries are. I want to know how good these batteries are and let you know then. So they should be here within the next couple of days, hopefully, either or. And then we start testing these batteries and can make a recommendation or not. Let's see what happens. Okay, guys, so far this update of the batteries today, I'm excited. We are making progress, very tiny steps at a time, but we are making progress. I haven't ordered all the equipment at once, you know, I'm still making decisions and learning as well as I go along. And I'm super happy to take you on this journey here as well, so you can learn from my mistakes or from my success and we all can benefit from this progress. As always, thank you so much for your support here on the channel and we shall see us again in the next video coming very soon. Thanks guys, see you then, bye bye.